Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Martin with Belvoir Auto Spa. I've got a vacuum review video today, not a car detailing video. Um, as some of you have been following my channel for a while may know, I do review vacuums as well. Um, it's just, it's a hobby of mine, something I enjoy doing. And you know, there's, there's a lot of cool things about vacuums that, you know, most people look past until they really start to look into it and things become a little bit interesting. Anyways, um, I've got the Shark Vertex bagless corded canister vacuum here today. Now I do have the full size Vertex. I didn't review it because it's been reviewed so much already. Um, but you've seen some of the other, I, I reviewed the, the Vertex cordless pro. Um, that one's still been going strong. Um, but once I saw that Shark came out with a canister and a Vertex canister at that, I was like, you know, I've, I've got to have it. And they do have a canister with a regular, uh, non duo clean brush. And then one that's also straight suction. I'll try to link them all below. Um, this is the most expensive one. The others are less expensive. So if you really want a sharp canister that's bagless, um, this one's top of the line. But you can, you know, go down the list and get something cheap or whatever works for your house. If you have This one's good for carpet and hard floor. The other one, just the brush, is also good for carpet and hard floor. The dual cleans just a little bit better. And then the one with straight suction is just good for hard floor. Anyways, let's get this open and check out uh, what's inside. Now I did get this off eBay. Uh, so it looks like, I believe the uh, seller did um, open it to inspect it and make sure everything was in there. He did tell me it was new, according to the description. Um, so I think I paid about $300 for this, where the regular price is about four, four, yeah, look, regular price is around 400 if, if not a little bit more. So it, like I said, this, this one's not cheap. Um, but neither is the Apex, neither is the Vertex. I also got my Vertex off eBay, so always check what sellers got on eBay, guys. You can get pretty lucky with them if you're trying to get something nice to save some money. Because uh, Shark doesn't pay me to review their vacuums. So I want to make sure I can save a few dollars here and there. Jeez, this guy got a, good, a pretty good job taping it. So let's see if we can get it open now. It's covered in tape. This side. Alright. So, here it's got a uh, quick start guide. Basically, you know, a quick uh, rundown how to put it all together. You know, bada 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 bada. Pretty straightforward how to put these things together anyways. Uh, we've got our menu booklet, um, owner's guide. It's got all the information you need if you want to know more about your vacuum. And yeah, Shark does wrap their things now in paper instead of plastic. I guess it's more environmentally friendly, so hey, that's cool. <laughs> Anyways, uh, first piece is we've got the wand, and what's cool about this, it is it is a multi-flex wand, so it does uh, bend to get underneath furniture, underneath beds, things like that, um, or it's straight. And this one's a lot more rigid than the stick vacuums they make, so that's pretty good. Next we've got the handle and hose. Might have been something on there I just tossed out. Is there? No. Get that out of the way. So got the handle and hose. Now this does look like it's got a nice little digital display. Um, my Vertex Pro cordless has a digital display. My regular Vertex does not. So that's pretty cool if they integrated that. And this is, well, I don't call it powered lift away, I guess, because it's constantly powered lift away mode since it's a canister. <laughs> uh, I've got a little uh, tool holder to place on the vacuum. It can hold your hose and a couple tools for you. A crevice tool. Yep, we've got a crevice tool with little uh, pickers for pet hair and such. We've also got a uh, upholstery tool, little pickers to get pet hair off of upholstery or stairs, whatever you're using. Got a lot of stuff in here. All right. Excuse me, I'm getting a little more comfortable. 
Oh, sitting on my legs is not that comfortable anymore. Get this out somehow. Maybe this is the floor head, cleaner head, motor head, whatever you want to call it. Oh, it's nice. I do like kind of align it with a softer paper so it doesn't scratch up. So we've got our uh, floor floor nozzle. It's got the uh, power fins. Now, guys, the power fins do have brushes. These are brushes, okay? But then it's got these fins that help keep the hair from getting tightly wrapped. And it's got these teeth back here that kind of pull the hair off. Now, they call these tangle-free um, to an extent. You got to understand, I guess they're called self-cleaning. You will still see hair get stuck in here. But as you continue to use it, it won't get, you know, bunched up in hair. It'll be pulling the hair out as you're cleaning. But when you see hair in the eye, I always say people complain, oh, it picked up hair. Like, yeah, that's going to happen. But the design of it is it's still going to pick up hair, but eventually it's going to pull that hair out. You're not going to have this tightly wound hair that you got to cut out with scissors. And I live with two long-haired women, and their hair does get stuck in this thing, but it never affects the cleaning ability, and I never have to clean out the brush roll because it's always actively pulling out the hair. And uh, another thing, it does have some nice headlights, so that's pretty neat. Pretty neat. And then we've got oh, the main unit. Okay. There it is. A decent amount of weight to it, too. Whew. All right. So we've got our cord rewind, so pull the cord out, cord rewind, that's nice. Power button, you can press it with your foot. Uh, what's this on the back? Got a post-motor HEPA filter. Goes right in the back here. So that's nice. Most of Shark's vacuums, at least all their plug-in vacuums, as far as I know, have HEPA filters. So that is one of the better features of a Shark if you have trouble breathing. Now the only problem is it is bagless and you do have to dump it out. So if you have sensitive allergies, maybe wear a mask, cover your face up when you dump this out and dump it out outside because uh, it is going to kick up dust. Now to remove the dust bin, it's got these things on the handle right here. There's your dustbin. Now it is kind of see-through. That is going to get dirty over time. I mean, it's a bagless vacuum, but you uh, do that, and then it's got this little button right here, and it dumps open, dump out all the dirt. And then we've got, of course, our pre-motor filters, as uh, Shark is famous for, uh, their soft foam one and their felt one. These do a pretty good job at getting all the uh, big, larger particles of dust and dirt, so I've never really had an issue with them. These start to turn brown, but you can always wash them in the sink with water. I like to use soap and warm water and keep wringing it until all the soap's out, let it dry by the window or something. Throw it back and you're good to go. All right, now let's get this thing assembled. So again, pretty straightforward. This looks like it connects here, clicks in place, easy enough. Stand up for this one. Connects right here, and this will connect right here. Let me see. Move it back a little bit. Sorry if you're having trouble seeing things. All right. Now I got to figure out where this uh, little tool holder goes. So bear with me while I do that. All right, so I got the tool holder figured out. It just kind of clips onto the front right here. It's got a little opening, you clip it around and throw your tools in there. So that way they're always accessible. Um, now this doesn't come with an upholstery tool like the motorized one or the air powered one. I've already got one of those, uh, but you kind of just pick the two attachments you want. Now one thing that I always love about canister vacuums is you can park like so, so this doesn't fall over. And then with the shark, for easy storage, I believe it's got a little parking thing right here. So you see this slot right here, 
slide this in there. And this is how you can store it so it's kind of out of the way. You know, it's not like a big, uh, big hassle. So that's nice. And I just realized this thing right here, well, we gotta adjust this a little bit, but now you could probably move this up or down to your preference. Um, but you know, that way you can put that there so the hose isn't completely in the way all the time. Kind of keep it all condensed. Anyways, that's the vacuum. <clears throat> Pretty nice, honestly. I think Shark designed this thing beautifully. It looks really nice easy to operate. Um, let's turn it on. So I just want to make sure I can get it on the camera because it does have the little display right here. So here's a little power display so I can get this to focus. It's got the various buttons but of course don't be a dummy like me and plug it in. So let me plug it in. All right, so I got it plugged in, so power it on. That's hard floor mode, carpet mode. You can hear the brush roll motor change. This thing's pretty quiet too. You can adjust your uh, suction power as well if you want more or less. That's a low suction, medium, high. Now, personally, when I do carpets, I usually do it in high, but if you have a, you know, a really thick carpet or something, you might want to turn it down, depending on your carpet or floor type. A hard floor, I like to do high suction as well, but, you know, adjust to your own preference. Um, but that's really nice that it's got the hand controls. You don't even have to really interact with the vacuum to turn it on or off. I know that can be a pain having to run back and forth with your vacuum. So, anyways, last thing we'll do here is a demonstration, so... We'll get this uh, set up so you can see the rug. And give me a moment, I'm gonna plug this somewhere else so it's out of the way. All right, so here we go. itself along like other sharks it's pretty strong so keep in mind you can't be a uh, you have to be strong to use this vacuum What'd you think of it? Anyways, I'm gonna give you a close-up shot for our final thoughts. Before we do the final thoughts, actually, I want to show you the dirt that it picked up. So you can see, didn't pick up that much because I mean this is a small area rug, but you can see it in there. Kind of hard to see it against the glare, but you see it all right there, that dust. So I mean, it does pretty good. I don't, you know, I'm not coughing or anything. I don't really have allergy issues, but. Just throwing that out there. Anyways, final thoughts time. All right, so the Shark Vertex uh, canister vacuum. I really like this. Now I've got a Dyson canister as well. And when I grew up, my mom had a Kenmore Progressive canister. She still has one, she got a new one, um, but that's what I grew up with. Um, so, you know, I'm pretty used to using uh, canister vacuums. We had a, a central vac at one point as well. Um, now, Pros and cons to this versus the full-size Shark Upright. This is lighter to use because you're not 
pushing this thing around. So I know one of the complaints about the uh, Shark Vertex upright is the the weight of it. It's not for everybody. I don't really have a problem with it. Um, so that is one of the pros. Um, another one of the pros is you got all the controls right there at, the, at your hand tips, just like with the uh, full size Vertex. Um, and so it's another nice feature. Um, but this does have the digital display where the uh, Vertex upright just has a little slide to select the modes and you can't really control the suction on that one. It's just, you know, when you when you adjust it, it'll adjust the brush roll speed and the suction at the same time. I'm not a fan of that. I'd like to be able to control both of them separately. Um, and you know, this is easy to store away. Now, what the thing I don't like about uh, canister vacuums because I've got a lot of crap in my house um, and it just gets stuck everywhere. Now I will say this has swiveling, all four swiveling wheels, so it is a breeze to maneuver. Um, it does not have a little rubber bumper, so you know, you're probably going to get some marks on it from your wall, bumping up against things. But you know, that's just the nature of the beast. Um, overall, I mean, this thing's pretty nice. It is pricey, but you know, I think it's worth it if you want a premium bagless vacuum. Um, now, you know, I know obviously there's brands like Mila and Sibo. They cost even more money. Most of them are bagged. Mila does have a bagless model, um, and they work. They work well. But you know, in today's world, most people don't want to spend that much money on a vacuum cleaner because vacuum cleaners are seen as, uh, for most people, you know, we live in a disposable world. Everyone says it, and you know, they get rid of something after X amount of years. Now, if you follow my channel, I do show some methods of how to fix certain issues. Not with sharks, because sharks. Sharks are just a pain to fix. You might as well buy the new part, honestly, if something goes wrong. And Shark only sells full assemblies and don't sell individual parts. If you want something that's fixed with individual parts, get a Bissell. Um, but, you know, Bissells, replace the belts, yada, yada. But Sharks, you know, you can buy a new head. You can buy a new this. You can buy a new hose. You can buy the new main unit if you need to, um, if it comes down to it. You know, you don't have to throw the whole thing away. You can replace individual assemblies, at least. And, you know, it is a little bit pricey, but... You know, at the end of the day, it's still not as expensive as uh, buying a whole new vacuum. And even if you get a premium vacuum, you still have to get those serviced at a vacuum shop. And, you know, number one, good luck finding a vacuum shop that's nearby. If you do live by one, awesome. Um, but they are few and far between. There's there's not many vacuum shops out there. And two, you know, because you're paying a professional to do something for you, it's not going to be a cheap service. It's not going to be expensive, but, you know, they're still going to charge you money. So you got to kind of balance it out. You know, what kind of person are you? And, you know, are you going to fix your th thing yourself? Would you rather just buy the new part? Would you rather just buy the new vacuum? Whatever, you know, and there's people that if you donate one of these to Goodwill, people like myself would be ecstatic because then we can get it for super cheap. But I'm rambling on too much. Anyways, um, I'm happy I got this machine. Uh, great to add to my collection. Um, if you got any questions about this or any other sharks that I've got, even Bissells that I've got, or even Dysons that I've got, uh, feel free to ask. I, I mainly collect, you know, modern, most of them are bagless. I have one bagged vacuum, um, which is a cheap Bissell, and it works great. But anyways, guys, I appreciate you watching the video. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your day to see this. Uh, leave a comment below of your thoughts of this machine. Give my video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Um, and check out the links below if you want to purchase one. I'll see you in the next video.